The title of uh, my guest lecture today is UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, commonly known as the SDGs, what they are and why they are important. And so today I will share three main points with you. So the first one is I will examine the question what are the SDGs, and then explain why uh, it is important for you to understand the SDGs and potentially uh, take actions to realize them. And then I will explain what issues, what teams are involved with the SDGs. These include, for example, poverty, hunger, agriculture, health and well being, education, uh, gender equality, water, even economic growth, employment, infrastructure, innovation, for example, energy, inequality, cities, consumption, uh, and even climate change, oceans, forests, peace, justice, partnership, and more. So as you can see, there are several and very important teams uh, involved with the notion of the SDGs. And so I will explain uh, why you should care about the SDGs and then offer uh, some ideas as to what you can do to actually realize the SDGs. And I will conclude uh, my guest lecture by linking, uh, connecting the SDGs to the important concept of development education uh, and with a brief summary of the main points discussed today, and then I will give you an opportunity to ask me questions about the topic of the SDGs. So as you can see on screen, uh, we have 17 SDGs. No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequality, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice and strong institutions, and then uh, the goal number 17 is partnerships for the goals. So these are 17 goals which world leaders have uh, signed up to. That means that they came and meet and met around the table and discussed the so-called Agenda 2030 for the last uh, that will last for 15 years, so exactly from 2015 to 2030. So now we are entering the last decades for the realization of the SDGs. And um, the core element uh, around which world leaders build the SDGs are the so-called five Ps. These five Ps are people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. And on the top of these five Ps, the motto of the SDGs is no one should get left behind, which means we should take care of everyone on the planet. So not only people in developing countries, uh, and uh, developed countries, but this would include animals, other species, nature, environment, and all the issues that I listed in uh, my previous PowerPoint slide. So just to emphasize some of the main themes involved with the SDGs, we have poverty, we have issues related to anger, agriculture, health and well-being, 
particularly education. Later on, I will explain the notion of development education, gender equality. Uh, this is particularly an important topic in Japan. Water, economic growth, employment, cities, energy, inequality, consumption, climate change, very important topic nowadays. Oceans, forests, peace, justice, and partnerships, some of which I listed in my introduction. So based on these SDGs related themes, every country, including Japan, will and is developing a national, a national the so-called national action plan. Because the fundamental question is, why should we care about the SDGs, which is one of the central questions in my guest lecture today? Well, I gathered for you some important statistics and numbers. So first of all, why should we care? We have 1.8 billion people aged in between 10 and 24 living today. And this is one of the, larger, the largest number in history. But close to 90% of the world's young people live in developing countries, the so-called developing countries. And more than 500 million young people aged 15, 24 live on less than $2 a day, which means close to extreme poverty. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, numbers are speaking loudly about the necessity of the SDGs. Another example, uh, approximately 74 million young people are unemployed. So that means they have no job and more than 600 million jobs are needed by 2030. So we should know and understand the causes and the consequences of some of the world's major challenges. For example, again, global hunger, poverty, injustice, inequality, and climate change. And so precisely for this reason, we need to develop a discussion around the SDGs. Fundamentally, uh, caring about the SDGs is about caring about human development, which fundamentally addresses four main points. And I try to synthesize for you today these four main points in one PowerPoint slide, which is challenging, but I believe very effective. So we are talking about human development, which is a process that enables human beings to realize their full potential and, for example, build self-confidence and lead lives of dignity and fulfillment. So this means that when we are, we are developing, we are achieving the SDGs, each and, sing, each and every single human being would, would be helped to develop and fulfill their full potential as human beings. And so live confidently, live confident, confidently that they have a position, they have a job, they have enough um, food to sustain their lives. It's also a process which frees people from fear of want and exploitation with a move towards a more decent, sustainable standard of living for people and planet. It is also a process of human development which involves and meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. And lastly, the SDGs are related to an approach of human development which looks to balance different and often competing needs against an awareness of the environmental, social, political, and economic limitations. So as you can see, um, the SDG's goal is really to achieve a more sustainable society. So um, one of the, I would say more frequently, uh, uh, kind of objections and uh, more frequently my students would ask certain questions around the SDGs when I teach the SDGs. Um, 
the these questions are related to how to actually can what can we do how we can achieve the SDGs, and so um, you could and I and I listed eight points and then later on perhaps we can discuss this. You can start where young people are at. So that means, for example, people around you at, the, at your university or a local community, uh, any uh, club activity that you might attend. So people around you would certainly show some degree of interest in the SDGs. You can also make global connections. So getting to know people around the world with the same interests. You can highlight the equality and diversity and justice issues related to the SDGs. You can also encourage other young people to imagine a better world. So share with them a sense of hope, which is based on the fact that you studied about the SDGs, you got to learn about the SDGs. You can also support young people to take action for global, global change. You can learn from your experiences, your direct experiences on a daily basis. You can learn from others' experiences. So your colleagues at the university, friends uh, outside the university, and then you can make development education, a concept that I will explain in a moment, and the SDGs, an ongoing part of your work. That means that, of course, you are very busy as a student and your priority is to succeed in your studies, but you can also develop a parallel interest in the SDGs and keep learning about it. So here are three extreme um, concrete uh, example and extreme poverty, fight inequality, address climate change. So these are all topics that potentially you can take care of and advance in your um, within your circle of friends and through your actions, through your studies and so on. So let me say that the SDGs are universal. So they are shared among countries, among people, meaning that, for example, um, the SDGs are, can be developed in Japan and what happens in Japan, we discussed this last time where we're talking about the notion of global citizenship. What happens in Japan, in Japan affects what happens throughout the world uh, by, by, based on the notion of linking the local and the global and vice versa, what happens around the world also affects what uh, happens in Japan. So this whole notion of the SDGs applies to all countries. Now, I'd like to link our discussion uh, around the SDGs to a notion of development education, which is a concept strongly interconnected with the SDGs, particularly connected to the SDG number four, which is quality education. So the notion of development education, which is actually increasingly coming to uh, popularity also in Japan is increasingly getting popular. It aims, development education aims to support young people to fundamentally increase their awareness and understanding of the, the interdependent and in, unequal world in which we live through a process of what I define as an interactive learning, but also critical thinking, debate, action, and reflection for example, again, around issues connected with the SDGs. And so development education, for example, challenges perception of the world and encourages young students to act for a more just and equal society at the local, national, and international level. And so I introduced today the development education notion because it's strongly interconnected with the SDGs. And so some of the values that you will find when you uh, learn more about the notion of development education, some of the values are related to equality, justice, diversity, uh, solidarity, sustainable uh, development, sustainability, interdependence, human rights, responsibility, 
particip participation and action, all values that are linked not only, of course, to development education, but also to the SDGs. And so here I prepared some of the key elements, actually four key elements through which sustainable development education uh, could be understood, um, not only by educators, but particularly by students. And so I'm not going through all the elements, uh, but I want to at least uh, uh, link the four main elements. So one is knowledge and understanding, uh, which is, for example, connected to uh, understanding more information about what happens in the world, for example, related to notions of gender and sustainable development and citizenship, as we uh, discussed last time. But another important element of sustainable uh, development education or development education is attitudes and values. So understanding oneself and others, social responsibility, and as you can see on screen, several other important points. And then we have skills and capabilities. And then we have behavior, experiences, and action. So these elements are all related to DE development education. And I wanted to conclude with a couple of more PowerPoint slides related to this notion of development education, because this is the key to actually implement concepts of the SDGs um, in, uh, in uh, learning and uh, in teaching and learning process. Of course, I'm not reading all the elements here on screen, but as you can see, some of the key elements of development education um, could be related to encouraging young people to participate on a voluntary basis, uh, encouraging uh, diversity, uh, encouraging um, uh, young people to take care particularly about marginalized young people, particularly in developing countries, partnership, planning and programs, um, observation, uh, activities related to eradicating justice and inequality. So all this notion of development education is related to the SDGs because it's the link to, for you to actually better understand how to implement the SDGs in actual uh, daily life. So I want to conclude uh, with uh, um, a table I created uh, to link the old discussion I presented at the beginning of the on the SDGs and the notion on development uh, education with uh, some of the core concepts that I discussed today and I discussed in my previous uh, guest lecture. And perhaps um, we can uh, get some questions on this and further discuss in our, in our Q&A session. So, we discussed in the first uh, guest lecture the notion of global citizenship and global citizen. Today, we discussed the notion of uh, SDGs and development education. So what does it mean to learn in a so-called global society? For example, it means to learn from experiences elsewhere in the world, from other countries, or identify common interests and develop solidarity with diverse communities, so people from different community. Combating racism, uh, widen your horizons and personal development, make a difference to the world you are participating in. In this, in this specific case, you are in Japan, but in the future you might join a different, uh, you might decide to travel and, and work in a different country understand your situation in a wider context, make connections, we particularly discussed this topic last time, making connections between the local and the global and develop skills and knowledge to interpret the events affecting our lives and also understanding the real causes of global inequality, justice and uh, Solidarity. So these concepts are a sort of a summary of the main themes that I presented on in the previous lecture and in this lecture. Thank you for listening and the questions are welcome.